flow. Just waiting to get uh, more people on and we'll go ahead and get started. Um, you know, stay on for about 15 minutes. Um, we do have board meeting tonight, so um, I've got I've to hop off here pretty quick um, and get ready for that. But um, I'll give an update and then answer a couple questions that have come in over the past couple days. And then we'll answer some questions in the comments if there are any. So. Okay, we're at about 100, um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is just a, a basic status update, which will update numbers at the end of the day. Um, right now, I don't think there's going to be any changes to these numbers. We haven't had a new case reported so far today as of this moment. Um, so that means we're at 26, same as yesterday. Um, we've added to uh, the data that we're reporting every day. Um, the active cases, the um, recovered cases are still there. And then um, there is the, the row for um, deaths. So um, those columns add up to 26, which is the total case amount um, since the first case, which was on March the 22nd. So there's a couple of important things to know. Um, so this week there's been four new cases reported. So we were holding at 22, and then this week we've had um, four additional cases. All four of those cases are associated with um, a long-term care uh, outbreak in another jurisdiction. So that's important to know um, for a couple of reasons, but also that we know that those four cases are not um, indicative or not signs of community spread in our county to help us make some decisions going forward. So I want you to know that. Um, we are still, uh, you know, getting reports in of testing. I don't know, I haven't checked today to see how many um, we've gotten in. Again, I wanna just remind you that the health department doesn't test. We do not, it's not required by law that we get those negatives or pending tests. So I wanna let you know that. But the ones that we get, we are tracking to help give you an idea of how many we think have been tested, at least at a minimal level. Um, there may be more, um, but what we know of, and that'll be in the update today as well at around four o'clock. So, um, so that's really where we're at in the status in the way of numbers. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue monitoring that and continue giving updates every day at 4 p.m. But I don't think there's going to be much change in the way the numbers are laid out at this time. Um, I have a couple of questions here that had come in through um, the website or through Facebook. And so I wanted to kind of address these. I'm going to talk a little bit about stay at home orders and guidance for reopening. I know that's been talked about a lot. So I'll get to that here in just a second. Uh, somebody asked, what do I think about youth sports this summer? Um, I don't know. I think it's hard to know that. We've got, we know that guidance is going to come from the state for reopening. Um, so that's important, but we haven't seen that yet. And we will, um, we will let people know when we know. But right now, I think it's going to be um, dependent on what kind of transmission is happening in the community at that time. And it's also going to be dependent on what the guidance looks like from the state. I expect that it's going to be very similar. Uh, to the national guidelines. And I wanna dive a little deeper into that in a minute, but I'm not saying youth sports are impossible this summer, but um, I'm, I'm just not sure right now and, it, and it's going to depend a little bit. So, you know, that's not a great answer, but um, I think we, we're gonna have to wait for guidance from the state uh, to be able to give a better answer to that question. Um, when the stay at home order is lifted, if we have a surge in cases, will a new stay at home, home order be issued? So um, again, I want to kind of dive deeper into this, but that's the concern is that if we take the gas off too much, too fast, that we will see another surge um, in cases in, in general, I'm generally speaking here. So we don't want to see that. Um, we don't want to see a surge to the point where the healthcare system is overwhelmed. Um, and so we got to be careful about how we move forward in, again, kind of take taking a step back and, you know, trying to go back to, you know, normal life. There's going to be things that look different going forward. The plan at the federal level is a phased plan. Um, you can find that on whitehouse.gov. 
Um, and I expect that we're going to see something similar come from the state in the way of guidance. Um, but it sounded like, from what the governor had said, that a lot of that's going to be carried out at the local level. Um, so it, it's going to be dependent probably on um, what disease transmission is, is what kind of disease transmission is happening at the local level at that time. Obviously, we are different than St. Louis. The What we're seeing right now is different than what St. Louis has seen. And um, these metro areas are going to have a different plan or maybe have a more stringent plan than what a local level um, or a local rural area, um, uh, such as maybe St. Francis County, other counties are going to have. So um, we're waiting on that. I'm gonna try to, to come to circle back to that here in just a minute, but that's the fear is that we don't wanna go back to stay at home order, so we need to be careful. Um, what is known about home testing? <clears throat> The FDA uh, released um, a press release a few days ago about home testing kits. Now, I've heard different things about this um, and read some different articles, but they have, this is going to be, you know, mirrored, but they have this article on their website that you can read about home testing. So this is meant to increase access to testing. We know that that is an issue, um, but we're gonna have to be careful with that home testing also. Um, what I had read initially was that it was gonna be focused more in on healthcare workers at first, but I haven't seen anything like that. And what I read here in this article from FDA really doesn't look like that. So um, looks like LabCorp is the company that's been approved for that. And it does say um, patient testing samples and that they're hoping to roll this out um, broadly across the country. You still would have to have an order from your doctor, but it sounds like they ship a box to you, you do the sample, it has some instructions, that type of thing, and then you send it back. So um, I think it's a, a good thing for increasing access to testing. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and you know it's gonna take a little while to get the capacity to deliver that probably to to what they're hoping it's going to be, but you know it sounds like an interesting an interesting piece that's on the horizon. So um, I want to go back to talking about reopening. So there's a couple of things, and probably if you read through the comments, there are people on both sides of wanting to have a stay at home order. Um, extended beyond, you know, May 3rd to, you know, folks who, you know, want it lifted right now. And I think it's somewhere in the middle. Um, we have to remember that COVID-19 is a public health problem. So is poverty. Um, and so we're going to have to continue to be in the middle somewhere. We do need to revive our economy but we're going to have to do it in a careful, uh, methodical manner to make sure we don't see the surge in cases so that we don't go back to a stay at home order. Um, and when I say we, I, I'm speaking generally, but I represent St. Francis County. So I mean, we as a country, a people, we don't want to continue being under stay at home orders, but we also do not want a huge surge in disease. So we need to just remember that it's somewhere in the middle of those things. And the economy and public health are both important. They're both important issues and they affect one another. Um, and so, you know, we haven't seen guidance from the state yet on reopening. I hope that that comes soon, uh, preferably, you know, Tomorrow is the end of the week, so we had hoped at the end of the week, um, but or maybe early next week, we have some drafts in place and things that we're working on, but we wanna make sure that our guidance is in line with the state's guidance because we don't wanna release something and then it be very confusing if we have to go back and change it due to the changes in the state guidance. So we're, we're waiting for that, but I assume that it is going to be very much in line with national guidelines, and you can see those on whitehouse.gov. That being said, um, when these things go into place, it is important to know that there is no hard and fast answer um, that this will be the way it is until we move to phase two. I say that mainly because if there's a case in a business or an employee of a business, things might have to look different in that place for a minute. 
we, we're not in that place right now, but we need to prepare for those types of changes to happen um, if we run into issues, um, you know, such as that. So um, it may not look the exact same way uh, in every single place, just given given what's happening. And, you know, a lot of this hinges on testing. Um, it It's important. Um, there's no way to rapidly test 66,000 people. Um, so I need you to keep that in mind. I agree. Testing is a is a concern. It's going to continue to be a concern until we can get where we want to be. Um, but it's it's not like you know we're flu right now. Um, you go to your doctor and, and you can get tested, and usually you're going to get a result right then. It's just not there yet. Um, but I think you know some of these steps from the FDA. You know these are things that move us in that direction. But that helps us to know what is disease transmission because when I report 26 cases, that means that which 21 of those are technically under the recovery umbrella right now. Um, but basically the, the 26 are lab confirmed cases. Does that mean there's more cases out there? Probably somewhere, um, but they're not uh, laboratory confirmed. So we have to uh, have that lab confirmed case to know where the cases are. We can also do some things like looking at ER data to know how many people are reporting or how what's the general level in the region of people coming to the ER for COVID-like symptoms. That helps us do some active surveillance. Um, so there's some really important pieces here that I think are gonna continue changing as we go forward um, to help us to better do our job in contact tracing and isolating quarantining cases. and we have to know that those cases exist to be able to do that. So, and that's that's done through testing. There's a couple of things I kind of want to say on that too. And I, I'm going to try to go back here through the comments real quick and and maybe I'll be on here a few more minutes than, than 15. But, um, you know, I just kind of want to say that Missouri is the lowest funded state per capita for public health. Um, and, you know, I see a lot of things being said on the federal level about contact tracing and, you um, case investigations and, and all of these things that are extremely important. And that's, that's what we do as public health. But I need you to know that public health in Missouri is very poorly funded. It, it's the lowest again, per capita out of the nation. Um, and so that plays a factor in how we're able to respond. And, you know, the state has told us we will not receive um, funding and we're fighting for that um, because we want to be able to do this. And thankfully, you know, we have 26 cases um, and we've been able to jump on those cases very quickly. Um, but obviously, if this got out of hand, we only have so many people that that can do this work right now. So we're doing a great job at, at that right now. And um, I see some things coming through that are just popping up. But I just want to let you know, we have 26 cases. Um, I don't know what other site has reported something else but it's 26, we update that every um, day at four o'clock. And so that's how many cases, so. All right, I'm gonna try to scroll back up here. And if there's some that I've already answered, I'll, I'm gonna try to scroll over those so that I can get to the ones that, I see a question about any update on antibody testing. Um, I think we're gonna start seeing that used more. However, um, that is really not a diagnostic tool. Um, the antibody test, test for antibodies. Um, the test that is being done, the nasal swab, um, that is a called a PCR test and it tests for genetic material of the virus. Um, and so it is a confirmatory test. I, the uh, antibody test is not a confirmatory test and is typically not um, the tool of choice for diagnosing um, a disease, COVID-19. Um, the, the IgG, Inside, I'm gonna get a little, you know, off in the weeds here about the antibody test, but the IgG is the part of the antibody test that tells you if you have been um, exposed and recovered um, from the test. So that means you have the antibody, um, but we don't have a level to know what level means that you're immune and how long are you immune. We don't have that data or that uh, research yet. Um, so antibody tests should not be used um, for as a diagnostic tool but I think we're gonna see and hear more about antibody test as time goes on. I'm gonna try to scroll past some things. Again, I kind of talked about guidelines already. I, oh, I'm so sorry, I hit, hit the wrong button. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna try to hurry through here. Okay, test. Um, I see somebody talk, asking about how many tests, um, but the the number of tests that that's there, 322, it, it's not 322, it's, it's 360 something as of yesterday. Um, but we'll, um, we'll get you that number at the end of the day. Again, I want to reiterate the health center does not do testing. Testing is done in doctor's offices at the hospitals. The clinician has to assess someone to know whether or not they need to be tested for COVID-19. So that's really how testing happens. And again, we don't have all of the numbers for testing because that's not uh, required to be reported, but we can give you a base level of what we know. Agreed, testing is going to increase and needs to increase as we go forward and are able to increase in capacity. Okay, I'm gonna keep going here. Should a company be able to operate starting May 4th if they're unable to maintain social distancing? Um, again, that's gonna depend on what the guidelines uh, say, but it sounds like the um, governor intends on most businesses opening at some level on May 4th. Does, sorry, does Parkland BJC report their tests to you? Um, positives are always reported. It seems that we're getting most, um, that they're sending, whether positive, negative, or pending, um, that we are getting those. So we, we believe that we are getting those from Parkland BJC. Um, we have a good relationship with them. We usually get an email from them every day with the, the number of people that have been tested. Yeah, just more more comments about testing and and you know it's it's a work in progress, but it's a concern throughout the entire state, so we're not alone in that. I see somebody asking me how am I doing through all this. Uh, I it, this surely is overwhelming at times. Agreed. I won't. I won't go into too much of that. I know that's not what anyone's here for. So, um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna scroll past some of the ones I've answered. Sorry. Um, what do you, what do you think about servers going back to work? I think you mean maybe, uh, the restaurant industry. I think, I hope I'm, I'm getting that right. Um, it sounds like that's going to happen on, on May 4th and there's going to be some guidelines of some kind. I've seen some draft guidelines, um, but nothing that's been official. And so um, hopefully we get those things quick because we want to give that uh, information to the businesses so that they have time to put planning together. And I know that some businesses have already been doing that on their own, but it sounds like May 4th, um, to some degree, that's going to be uh, able to be done. So. I'm gonna try to scroll past this some of this stuff. Um, I see some questions about Washington County. You'll have to reach out to Washington County for answers to their questions. I'm really over on time. Um, trying to get through here. I'm just trying to see if I can get some of these questions that are to the bottom. I never am able to get there. Uh, are masks mandatory? They are not mandatory. They are recommended. They are recommended. And when we say mask, what we mean is a cloth uh, face covering. So surgical mask and 95s are really should be reserved for um, healthcare workers. Um, but uh, cloth covering is is a, is appropriate. So. Um, I see some questions about testing being a um, being required before someone's uh, able to go back to work or a business school, that type of thing. Um, I don't know if this means just testing of anyone or if you mean retesting someone who was once positive. Um, but some businesses I've heard are have required, you know, somebody who is sick with maybe COVID-like symptoms um, that they've required them to be testing, they are able to do that. Um, the guidelines that I have seen do not require that. Um, now, if you've had COVID, we use the recovery. You can do two things to be able to be released from isolation. You use the recovery um, guidelines, which is the seven days out from symptoms, three days of recovered symptoms without the use of fever-reducing medications, or two negative tests. 
Um, that information is on CDC's website. Um, most people are utilizing the recovery guidelines based on symptoms uh, because testing is an issue. So, okay, I've got to hop off here. I'm, I'm sorry. We will go back through and try to get some of these questions. A lot of the questions um, that have, have come through after are also on our frequently um, asked questions on our website. Um, so please, please check those out. Um, and then of course you can reach out to us here at the health center, 573-431-1947 or submit questions via the website. Thank you for being on. I want to continue to encourage everyone to continue following the guidelines. The more people that do what is asked in the guidelines and the statewide order, the sooner we can head back to normal life. So I would ask that you continue to do those things. Um, if you feel like you are sick and you need to be tested, you need to reach out to your healthcare provider um, and talk with them and find out, call them, find out if you need to be tested or if they can test you. People with emergent symptoms like shortness of breath um, those or difficulty breathing, those need to be seen right away and you do need to go to the hospital for symptoms such as that. So calling 911 or and letting them know your symptoms and that you think you have COVID or calling the hospital before you arrive. Um, again, thanks for being on. I, I just wanna encourage us all to remember that community matters and um, it's up to every single one of us to do this. And we appreciate you guys. I know that it's it's been a struggle for all of us. And, you know, we all need to work together um, going forward. And, you know, I hope that, um, you know, you're at least encouraged to know that we do have people that are recovering from this. But it still is a serious um, situation. And we're going to have to be careful moving forward so that we don't go in the direction um, of having, you know, a huge surge in cases, that type of thing. So um, appreciate you guys. Um, I am planning next week to drop down to once a week for lives. Um, so I won't be on on Tuesday. I'm not planning to unless things change and I need to be. Um, I plan to be on on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Again, if if things change and it seems that I need to, to hop on here, I will do that. I want to let you know I give media updates on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m to local media. So there's lots of information out there and we'll continue updating um, case counts and putting information on our Facebook and website. And when we have some guidelines that are ready to go, um, you know, we'll put those out there as well. So we appreciate you. Thank you.